In this video, I'm going to be comparing two React State management libraries, Recoil and Jotai. You can find the documentation on the respective sites, recoiljs.org, and just the GitHub for Jotai. All of the documentation that they have is pretty simple. It's really not too hard to get started with either of these libraries. The main difference is these are both Atom-based uh, state management, which is a little different than what you normally have with React. So in React, when you're using use state or use reducer, you're basically tying the state to a specific component and to access it anywhere else you have to either prop drill it down or you have to set up a context provider and then reach up to that context provider in which case you're still within the react tree that's been created with atoms you're basically creating a store outside of the regular react tree that is created and this video on the recoil site explains how this kind of works really well um, at a pretty simple level to really get a deep understanding of it uh, going through the source code is probably the best way to try and understand that. But basically, these are two very, very similar libraries, and we're just going to be showing how they work. But before we get to the API of them, let's go ahead and implement the logic for this specific application that we're building. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the code editor over here and show sort of what we're building. So inside of app.js, we don't have a whole lot going on here. Basically, we have this sidebar and we're going to have all these element inputs. The elements are what we're actually tying together. The elements are going to be little boxes and we'll be adjusting the X, Y coordinates and the height and width and color of them. And then there's going to be a canvas page. And so that canvas basically is where all the elements will come through and they'll each get rendered and they'll all be draggable so we can move them around. So pretty simple thing. I mean, think of it like a, a very, very, very bad Figma. <laughs> That's basically what we're going to be building. So we'll go into elements dash state.js and that's basically where we're going to be working for the most part. I've already done a lot of the scaffolding because I don't want to go through everything. I hope that you're familiar with use reducer and how reducers work. If you're not, go ahead and um, go to reactjs.org and look up use reducer and you should be able to get started pretty easily by looking through how these work. So we've got several different cases that we want to account for, um, several different actions, adding an element, removing an element, start drag, stop drag, the actual drag itself, change the element attributes, it's just changing any attributes on it. So that's pretty much it. We already have Emmer installed and we're gonna be using that. If you're not familiar with Emmer, basically it's just an, a really easy way to uh, adjust a some state that you have. You can use mutations, you can directly mutate the elements on it, but Emmer will create a new copy of that object that you're you're mutating basically. And we'll see that in action in just a second. So the first thing we wanna do is actually create a new element. So we'll say const new element equals create element. This is a little helper that we have right above here. And it just takes an XY um, and we'll go ahead and get that from the action that's coming in. Now we can see that action is actually declared down here. So add element is a little helper that we have and it will return an object of add element X and Y and where this actually gets used is inside of the canvas. And here we can see that we have add element. It gets dispatched. So again, if you're not familiar with you know how dispatches work and everything, that's all use reducer stuff. So this is all very um, kind of core React stuff at the moment. And we're really just using the client X and, and you know getting rid of the left and the top and stuff so that's at the right place. So that's pretty much how that works. We get that new element. And then of course we need to actually add it onto the elements that we have. So the state looks like this right now. We've got elements, colon, and it's just an array. So we're gonna say draft, and the draft is actually the thing that we're trying to mutate. So it's not the actual state itself, it's like a copy of the state, which will then get turned into a new version of that state. Dot elements dot push. And we can say new element. Of course, you need to spell things correctly and we should be good. And so what it says is double click to add an element. We have this on double click. So if we double click, let's see if it'll work. Ah, there we go. So we got the double click. Now I cannot drag it, unfortunately, and I can't escape. I cannot uh, try and change these numbers, but nothing's gonna happen. But if I double click, I can keep adding them and you'll see them showing up on the left-hand side. So all of that's working, which is great. Let's go ahead and add the remove element because that's uh, not too, too hard. So we can say const, and we're gonna go ahead and get the ID off of the action. So again, let's go ahead and go down to this remove element and make sure we're getting everything we need. We just need the ID, so that's pretty simple. So we'll go const ID equals action. And we'll say element index. So we'll actually try and find the index itself. Oops, elements dot find index. And then we'll take the element. 
and we'll match for the matching ID. And so let's do a little bit of error checking, uh, checking and handling. We'll say if element ID X, that equals negative one, then we just want to return. We're just going to bail basically. But otherwise, what we want to do is we want to take the draft dot elements and we have to splice out the element index with one. So that means that we're going to delete that element at that place. And that's really all we need to do get that to get that working. So let's go ahead and refresh here. We'll double click and we'll click the X and that works, which is great. So down here we can see that we're actually passing into draggable. We're passing this on delete, which dispatches remove element that on delete gets past that closed button. So that's how that's working. Pretty simple once again. So now with the dragging features, there's several things that we actually have to do there. But before we get to the dragging, let's go ahead and hook all this up because it's not too, too hard either. So if we go to change element attributes, we can see that really what it does is it just passes in any new attributes and we're just automatically going to change these. So we're kind of, you know, accounting for that the consumer of this is handling this correctly and not passing in things that shouldn't be changed. They're not even going to be reflected if they did pass anything else wrong, but you know, this is a good case where we could do some type checking or um, just some simple checking to make sure nothing silly happens. So we're going to go ahead and say let ID and new attributes equals action. We'll say const element equals draft dot elements. And then this time we'll just do find element dot ID equals the ID. And then we'll say if the element is undefined for some reason, we're just going to return. We don't want to change that. We have to spell it correctly here. And then we're going to say object dot assign element and new attributes. So this will just assign them all in there. Again, we can do the sign because we're in Ember land. Um, this doesn't actually need to be a let, so we'll just make that a const and then we'll break because um, we'll be done with this case. So if we add one here and then we adjust the width, that works, adjust the height. Let me uh, change it a little bit more drastically. There we go. Change this color to anything we want. We can change the X position. We can you know, change this to something and it all works, which is great. We can delete it again and add a new one. So finally, we need the start drag, stop drag, and drag. And so these are all implemented as separate things because we kind of need to keep track of a couple different things. So I'll go in here so we can look at this very quickly. Um, so we've got start drag, stop drag, and drag. So start drag actually gets passed down into the draggable. That's one of these things individually. And basically what happens is we say on mouse down, we're going to dispatch and say start dragging and we're going to take the e.clientx, the event, the x and the y so that we can kind of keep track of where exactly it is. And then with the other two, um, with stop drag, it's, it's pretty simple. We're just going to call it and that'll just say we're done dragging. And then with actually dragging, um, it will continue to update with that x and that y on the mouse move. And so this is also important to note, this is on mouse leave. So if we are dragging, we go out here, it will automatically stop dragging and we'll see that in just a second, but let's go ahead and implement these. So the first one to implement is start drag. So we'll go ahead and get a couple things off of that. What do we need? We need the ID, the X and the Y. So I'm just gonna actually copy this one really fast and say const equals to action. So that's what we're getting off of the action. We'll say const and then we can, we can actually do the same thing that we had here, get that element first. And then again, we really can just copy and paste here and maybe we could extract this out to make this a little bit easier, but for now, copy and pasting should be fine. Um, we wanna go ahead and get some things, uh, get some differences between where this X and Y is and where the element currently is, um, just because this handles some of this, you know, the math that's in here. I'm not gonna go too much into detail as to how all that's working. You can look through the source code if you're really interested in absolute positioning and all that kind of stuff. We're really just wiring things up here. So we got the diff x and the diff y, and so we want to say object dot assign. And we'll say draft, and then we're going to say dragging id, id, and then diff x, and then diff y. And so up to this point, everything with draft or the state, we've been adjusting elements, and now we just added three new things. So let's go ahead and add these here, and we're going to set these all to be null initially, and that's important mostly because we check if that draggable id is null or not um, to know whether or not we should actually be uh, basically emitting these dragging events or doing anything on the dragging, but we'll see that in just a second. So we've got object dot assign, assigning that with the dragging ID, the diff X and the diff Y. Now we want to add the stop drag, which is pretty simple. We just say object dot assign, and we're actually going to take, I could just copy this entire thing, 
because all of these again are just we're going to just be resetting them to null so this is pretty simple delete that extra line and then finally we want to actually do the drag which is a little bit more complicated but it, it's nothing um, too too crazy so we're going to go ahead and do uh, we can actually let's see probably want to go down here and see what we're passing in okay so just that x and the y so let's say const um, but we do need to get these things from draft too so we can pull these off because we're going to need those from the draft itself of course we don't need to set that to id initially and then we can say if the dragging id is equal to null here we can just fail early um, we could do this inside the component itself but i kind of like to keep this logic in the state i feel like putting this logic in the component itself um, just kind of separates your logic into multiple places and i'd rather kind of treat this as you know saying that dragging id of being null versus having an actual id are kind of two separate states of this machine that we're dealing with so that's why i like to do it that way and then we can say um, we want to get the actual element itself so we're going to copy this again but in this case, it's a little bit different because we don't actually have an ID. We have the dragging ID. Um, we don't have a variable name ID, I should say. So after that, what we're going to do is now we'll get the X and the Y off of action. And then we're going to say object.assign that element, which is an object with a, a two new attributes. We'll do X and Y. And then X will be math.round X minus that diff X. And then this will be very similar y minus that diff y and we should be off to the races boom